This is the twelfth message on the book of Acts, and we have labored to share with you what is on our heart. The book of Acts is a picture of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I've come down to, to this last message. I'd like for you to look not in the book of Acts first, but I would like for you to look in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 13 and chapter 1. I want to read this. I'm talking tonight about angels in the book of Acts, the manifestation of angels in the book of Acts. Now, in Hebrews chapter 13, it says in verse 1, let brotherly love continue. Now, you folks viewing by television, uh, I'd like to encourage you to get your Bible. Make some notes. Stay with us. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. In other words, angels can take the form of a human being, and you'd never know you're around an angel. God may have angels walking in your midst many times, and you not know it. Then in Hebrews chapter 1, it talks about angels. It says in verse 13, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit at my right hand, and I will make your enemies your footstools? Are not angels, are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Now, that's very important. I want you to remember that. Now, turn to, to your, in your Bible to Acts chapter 1. Now, the, the, of course, in the Bible, angels are all through the Old Testament. And when the New Testament, with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we have angels appearing to Joseph and to Mary many times, the mother of Jesus, and the angel named the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and uh, when Jesus was in the garden uh, of Gethsemane, uh, an angel came and, and strengthened him. And, uh, and then uh, we know that angels did minister to Jesus uh, in his ministry. But now I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about their, their ministry to us in this church age. Everybody say seven. seven. There are seven times that angels come to people in the book of Acts. Well, somebody says seven is the perfect number. I don't know if it is, fine. But there are seven times angels appear there to people in the book of Acts. And I want to talk to, talk to you about that because we are living in the church age. And what they had in the book of Acts, we have a right to today. I was studying, meditating on this, and, uh, and the Lord seemed to impress me with this. And never before had I ever thought of it in all of my ministry. I've read these seven occasions many times in the book of Acts. But he said to me, he, uh, he impressed, he didn't use words. He said, I want you to notice that these angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who are heirs of salvation. In other words, angels uh, get active when we get involved in this message of salvation to the world. Every time, every person here that, that, that is involved with an angel in these seven times are people who are reaching out to a lost world, who are trying to preach the gospel, who are doing their best in spite of persecution, who are reaching out with a hungry heart toward God and wanting to be saved. In other words, salvation, deliverance, missing hell, going to heaven. Anybody who's tied up with that, angels are going to help them. But I'll tell you, if we're living a selfish life, bogged down in materialism, bogged down in the things of this world, strapped by man's ideas, and just halfway serving God. We don't need, need much help from, uh, from angels, but if we'll sell out totally and completely and walk on the water out where God's Son is and dare to, uh, to give our very best to spread the gospel, we can expect angels to help us and to deliver us and to uh, enable us to do the work of God. Can you say amen? amen? Well, let's sell out. Let's turn loose. Let's cut the... You know, it's awfully easy, you know, to, to, to stay close to the shore. Just leave the boat tied up and well, maybe about 100 foot, just be sure you don't get out there too far. But I tell you, it's good just to cut the boat, lift the anchor, and let God take you where he wants to take you. I'll tell you, God's raising up an army like that. Well, chapter 1. Chapter 1 is where the angels, two angels appeared there. And uh, these men were watching Jesus go up to heaven. And uh, as they watched him, he rose up uh, into the clouds, on and on and on. I can imagine, if I saw somebody rising up in the air, I'd watch them too. Well, the angels said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye? This is verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, uh, as he went up, behold, two men who were dressed in white apparel. You know they're angels. 
when uh, they said to them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus. Everybody say, same Jesus. Same Jesus. This same Jesus. Now look here just a moment. Now, you know, there's not two Jesuses. Paul talks about preaching another gospel, another spirit, and another Jesus. There's just one Jesus. He's a miracle-working Jesus. He's a Jesus that baptizes in the Holy Ghost and causes people to speak in tongues. He's a Jesus that heals and delivers and casts out demons. This same Jesus, the same one that was in the book of Acts and the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, this same Jesus when he is going to come back just as you have seen him go. I want to tell you that angels reminded them and reminded, remind us that Jesus Christ, the very same one who was born in Bethlehem's manger, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who walked the shores of Galilee, who opened our blind eyes, who made cripples walk, this same Jesus who went to that cross, died the ignominious death of the cross, who paid the price for our sins, who went to hell for us, who arose again and ascended up into heaven. This is the same Jesus that's going to come back again. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's coming back again. Say, even so come, Lord Jesus. I'm ready. Well, now that's the first appearance. And, and the second appearance is found over here in Acts chapter 5. Let me give you a rundown on that first. I'll tell you it's wonderful to read Acts chapter 5 because a great revival broke out in Jerusalem as a result of them speaking in other tongues and a crippled man getting healed. Now, the great persecution. Great uproar among the religious crowd because of miracles were happening and sick people were getting healed. The Bible says in verse, 27, uh, verse 17, and then the high priest rose up. Looked like he ought to be for it. The high priest and all they that were with him of the sect of the Sadducees and were filled with indignation. Think about it, folks. The religious crowd filled with indignation because multitudes were being saved and multitudes were being healed and demons were being cast out of people. Filled with indignation. And the Bible says they, they laid their hands on the apostles and put every one of them into prison. What happens to men who are sold out to God, who, are, who have given themselves to signs and wonders and miracles, who don't care what the world says, who don't care what the relig religious crowd says? What happens to them? Does God know where they are? Does God knows what, know what's going on? It says they put them all in prison. Look at verse 19. Glory to God. But, everybody shout but. But, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand, and speak in the temple all the words of this life. Can you say amen? amen? You see, angels are going to help us if we'll turn loose, if we'll evangelize the world, if we'll not care what man says. I'm telling you, angels are on the job to help those who are heirs of salvation. Well, now, open your Bibles to uh, chapter 8. Now, let me just share the background of this with you. Philip was a deacon. Everybody say a deacon. deacon. Well, another, another word is a, a layman. Everybody say a layman. Amen. See, all you lay folks who are viewing by television, you women, uh, many of you, you don't think you have any part in the ministry. Listen, every child of God needs to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and, and be preaching the Word of God in some manner. You can have signs and wonders and miracles. Now, this man went down to the city of Samaria and had a great revival. The Bible said many people got saved because they saw the miracles that he healed, because sick people got healed, lame people got healed, and demon-possessed people got delivered. Can you say amen? amen. Now, when he got through with that great revival. See, he's just hanging loose and traveling right, just ready to go any place. And they, then Peter and John came down. They all prayed that they might get the Holy Ghost. And all these people got the Holy Ghost after they got saved. Then notice that God knows what's going on. And, and Philip is interested in, in, uh, in, in spreading the gospel. Verse 26, and the angel of the Lord, after this great revival, the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip, saying, arise and go toward the south under the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. In other words, if you are sold out to God and want to spread the gospel, angels even will help you know where to go. Amen. I mean, they'll help, help you know what God's will is. It's always scriptural to have angels help you in this matter. Well, now, God saw that Ethiopian eunuch, that black man that was a, a treasure of, of the queen of Ethiopia, and he saw him searching for him. He saw his hunger heart. 
He said, I'm going to Jerusalem. See if I can find peace down there. They're having a great feast over there. He came all the way in that chariot uh, from Ethiopia uh, into Egypt. And now he's going back, and his heart is still empty. And oh, God said, look, we're going to have to help that man. And, and, and he sent an angel down there and said, Philip, you've had a great revival. Now I've got something else for you to do. Just go down there and stand in the desert. Now, that's not a very good thing to say. I mean, it's hot in the desert. And he said, go down about midday about midday. God will tell you some strange things to do. See, God knew that man was searching. And when Philip got down there, he won him to the Lord, got, got him baptized in water. Well, the angel appeared, and God will help you. Angels will help you if you're sold out to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. 